we're talking about the internet and the experience that we have on there, um, uh, let's talk about the Trust Manifesto just a, a little. Um, okay. Yeah, where did that come out of? Was it at all driven by the fact that now you have a family and you're you're thinking about the safety of the internet and what kind of world you want to leave for them? Or was it just that, hey, you know, this seems like a good book to write? <laughs> it's like, screw it. I've got loads of time free. I'm just going <laughs> to dawdle and doodle around. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it came from, to be frank again, the uh, We'd been pretty bad within WeTransfer documenting some of the things that we were doing. So part of the book is about documenting what WeTransfer had been doing and actually trying to put some logic behind, you know, why, you know, why we did things the way we did, why, you know, we weren't collecting much data, why we thought that was important, why we think, you know, uh, an offline experience is important you know, to try to replicate online. You know, and uh, for me, a lot of that was just making notes and then actually thinking, oh, actually, this is quite interesting. If I explore this further, this is. This could be quite an interesting topic to uh, you know to get into and in, i mean in my book i try not to to answer too many questions but to ask more questions and some people criticize me because um you know i wasn't coming to them with a solution so i think a lot of people from a book want to go this is how you do it this is what you must do to build a successful tech company you must do a b and c and then raise a b c funds <laughs> and i didn't say any of that i was just you know trying to raise some questions and going through a process and the reason i interviewed you know a variety of people so i interviewed stephen fry and gary kasparov um uh, aaron coblin uh jimmy wales you know just to really try and get a bit of perspective from their point of view as to how the internet is put together and what what's working and what's not working um and you you know you don't want to hear from tech people all the time about the internet to be frank you know they live in it so much it's there's this expression in Holland, you know, that plumbers always have the worst plumbing, right? Because they're always busy, you know, fixing someone else's house. So in their own house, it's a complete bender. Um, so, you, you know, I think it's the same with tech people. You don't really want to hear from them about what a good a good website or the, a good internet would look like. There are far more interesting people to talk to that have got nothing to do with it. Town planners, um, you know, architects, uh, you know, people that are running civil rights movements. The most interesting people to talk to are the ones that are outside of the internet. And I think... Um, you know, it's it's such a young thing, the internet, and being in LA, in a city that's only 150 years old, you can still see the remnants of these boom towns that were the last great, you know, sort of uh, drive, push for uh, prospecting and exploring new space. Um, and, and the remnants are still so fresh. And I, what I was thinking was, you know, the internet has this potential of being this huge boom town. If you think of Silicon Valley, it's enormous the the infinite ring the infinite loop sorry of uh, the you know the apple um, head office you know if apple was to go bankrupt who would take over that office space who could possibly fill the infinite loop so there is this possibility that you know that could be the next big boom town and i think that would be a massive shame right and you know, there are certain things about the internet that i really don't like there are certain companies online that i really don't like um i don't want them to disappear because so many jobs are you know beholden on that infrastructure on that, those those huge organizations and it's not just employees but it's the people that have built up businesses off the back of those companies off the back of those employees we're talking about millions of people nowadays so we've just got to make sure that it's 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 well managed and if i if i make that comparison again to the offline world you know so much of uh so much of the internet is just not well thought through very much like the city of la when it was first built you know very poor infrastructure. The infrastructure was then put in, the infrastructure was then removed. Um, you know, a sprawling mass, very little connection. It's basically a metropolis that isn't connected. It feels like the internet. And so, you know, in the process of writing the book, it just felt like uh, this is all natural. Actually, we've got to go through this process to get to the other other space. And again, if you, if you look at a city like London, um, London had no parks until 1850. So, you know, there was space but it was mostly private. Hyde Park was private hunting ground until 1850. And only in 1850 was it turned over to be public space because they realized that the people of London needed space to be able to communicate and meet and greet, you know, that wasn't owned by anyone. Um, that's not very long ago. And on the internet, we don't yet have those public spaces, but they will come, you know, if it's just such a young space, we haven't yet thought about it, but we will have to. And that I thought was a really interesting, you know, journey to go through. So that's 
some of the questioning that I, I was asking in the book was, you know, you and I need to take responsibility for this space. You and I are accountable for it. Then the company that you have and the company that I have are responsible for it. And the government is responsible and we all need to pay a part in it. And if you want to set up a neighborhood watch in your local community, you should, you should do it. Right. And as a company, you should think about what sort of services you're going to support the community with and what you're going to bring to it. And as a government, you need to think about what sort of regulation and legislation you're going to put in place to make sure, uh, you know, it, it's well looked after and well nurtured. Um, and all of that has yet really to happen. It's, it's still so embryonic. Mm. That I think is really interesting. It is interesting. I've always seen it as the Wild West, to use another analogy. Yes. So 30 years on, what, what do you think it's going to look like? You got a crystal ball? 30 years, it will look nothing like uh, the internet that we know of today. It's been a land grab, right? And look at the domain names. There are no domain names left. They're all taken. So literally all those sort of make that uh, offline online uh, comparison again. The, the, the high street's full. All the shops have been taken. We've now got to work out, you know, which ones are going to last. Who's who's going to be relevant? The advertising business online is pretty much going to disappear. So all those shops that set up that were basically only able to keep the storefront open because they had advertising being generated on the on the walls or above the you know signage or whatever with billboards, they're dead. That cookies and private browsing and everything is going to kill off the majority of the advertising business. So I I believe that 60% of the internet is advertising based. So that's a, you know, that's a gentrification project, right? All that's gone. 40% is going to be left. 40% needs to be some sort of combination between just, you know, great sites like Wikipedia that we pay for because we really value it, we donate or whatever, and the rest will be subscription. And then I hope very much like a, you know, well-structured cityscape, there is some space that's public parklands. There are some spaces we can go to to just hang out and, you know, have virtual coffee or whatever and, and you know, not have to be in the infrastructure of Google or Facebook or Apple or Amazon. Um, and, um, you know, again, that's that's the journey you've got to go through, right? When you move from public land to private land and back again to public space, um, it has to go through a phase of sort of regulation and that's yet to come.